All right, Holly, uh, thank you for that uh, introduction. It's a pleasure to be back here in uh, Des Moines. I'm a graduate of uh, Drake University. But the presentation is Business as Unusual, and this is a new book that I have coming out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly walk you through 10 principles that are gonna help you future-proof your business. And I play on this theme, un, and here's the first one. We have to expect the unexpected. This is a factual statement from my perspective. Today's the slowest rate of change you and I are ever gonna see again. And this is true even during the pandemic, it might feel like the world has slowed down, but it hasn't. Remote working, online education, telemedicine, but I'm here to tell you, this slide really sums it up. These are e-commerce sales. It grew more in April and May than the last 10 years combined, and it's why Amazon has added a trillion dollars to its market capitalization during the pandemic. The world is accelerating. I don't have time to walk you through all the trends, but just one of them is the advances in robotics are gonna transform a lot of your different industries. But here's the other thing, in order to expect the unexpected, we're no longer living in linear times, we're living in exponential times. And a lot of these trends are gonna double 10 times in the coming decade. But if something doubles 10 times, that doesn't mean it's 10 times as big, it's gonna be a thousandfold. We go from one to two to four to eight to 16 to 32 to 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. We're gonna see some thousandfold increases. And you might think this is hyperbole, but let me just give you one trend that's doubling. Wearable technology, already transforming the insurance industry, gonna transform the healthcare industry. Uh, Apple is getting into wearable technology and they're gonna start getting into healthcare, but the pandemic is accelerating wearable technology because this little ring might help us detect if we have COVID a lot sooner rather than later. That's just one trend that is accelerating. So expect the unexpected. Next thing you have to do is you have to explore the unknown. One of the other trends that's accelerating, the number of satellites we're putting up into space is exploding. What this means, we're gonna launch 30,000 satellites in the next few years. What this means is we're gonna deliver high-speed internet access all across the globe. The reason this is so transformational, Four billion people have access to the internet today. In the next few years, another four billion people. This is gonna transform a lot of different industries. But in order to explore the unknown, this is how we always see the world, right? And that looks like it's the right map. But you know what, there's an equally legitimate way to view the world, and it's this way. From outer space, there's no north or south. We just put North America and Europe on top because that's where the first cartographers were from. But you should get used to looking at the map this way because it is the top half of this map where those four billion people are gonna come online. It is Africa, Indonesia, China, India. Huge opportunity for global growth is coming your way even during the pandemic. There are a lot of reasons to be optimistic. The third principle, we have to embrace uncertainty. And in order to embrace uncertainty, the first thing you have to do, embrace ambiguity. What word does this say? Anyone? True. Anyone see anything else? Well, viewed from another perspective, suddenly it's false. The one thing I know about the future, it's not true or false. It is not black or white. You're gonna have to embrace ambiguity. And let me just give you a trend that's gonna require you to embrace ambiguity. This is the internet of things. In the next few years, we're gonna go from billions of sensors connected onto physical objects to trillions. This is transforming healthcare. We already have smart pills, but you know what's after smart pills? Implantable technology. There are companies who are now implanting microchips in their workers. And I know some of you are going, oh my God, that is awful. And maybe it is, but here's where you have to embrace ambiguity. Do you know how many, what percent of the employees voluntarily signed up for that program? 98%. Why? Because it keeps them self uh, it keeps them healthy and safe. So is the technology good? Is it bad? I don't know. We're gonna have to embrace ambiguity in the future. Number four, we're gonna have to unlearn a lot of things. Let me give you a little quiz. Regardless of where you are from in the Midwest, what two colors are the yield sign in your home state? I want you to just think of the answer. And if you said yellow or yellow and black, congratulations. Unfortunately, that was the correct answer up until 1971. The yield sign has been red and white for almost 50 years. Isn't that remarkable? For me, it is a wonderful metaphor for unlearning. Many of us learned yield signs were yellow and black when we were first learning to drive. The problem is that old crappy information has just stayed stuck in our head, even in the face of overwhelming visual evidence to the contrary. 
We've been zipping by these signs for decades and it just hasn't processed. I'm here to tell you there are certain things you learned about your job, your business, your industry, your customers, your competitors. Yeah, they were all true yesterday. You know what? They're no longer true today and we're gonna have to unlearn. One of the trends that's gonna require us all to unlearn, advances in artificial intelligence. This is from the CEO of IBM. She says 100% of jobs, 100% of business, 100% of industries can be transformed by artificial intelligence. She's right. So what might we need to unlearn? Well, the makeup of your C-suites. You might have to have a chief artificial intelligence officer in your job or in your industry a lot sooner than you are expecting. Why? Because this trend is accelerating. Principle number six, we're gonna have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Like some of the other speakers, I'm a huge sports fan. Any of you happen to know who the NBA's all-time most accurate free throw shooter is? He's up here on the slide. Rick Barry. And how did Rick Barry shoot his free throws, sir? Granny style. Now, there are 1,200 players in the NBA, and many of them are awful free throw shooters. And the purpose of the game is to win. And to do that, you have to score points. And yet there is not a single NBA player who is going to shoot granny style? That's ridiculous. But why is that? I think it, this quote sums it up. It's because most people would rather fail conventionally than succeed unconventionally. We're moving out into this future, and regardless of what business industry you're in, you're going to have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're gonna to have to take some risks. You're gonna to have to look a little foolish, but if you're willing to do that, you're going to be able to future-proof yourself and your business. And this is just one example. I know there are a couple of people here from uh, the Associated General Contractors. The advances in 3D printing are absolutely accelerating. The construction industry is going to change, and you need to leverage some of these new technologies. A lot of people won't do it. Why? Because they'd rather fail conventionally than succeed unconventionally. Next principle, you have to try some unorthodox ideas. I was out at the Consumer Electronics Show uh, before COVID, and Amazon is now partnering with Kohler, the Wisconsin-based manufacturer of uh, toilets, to make a smart toilet. And now a lot of people will poo-poo that idea, pardon the, the pun, so like, who needs a smart toilet? And all it does is it flushes itself without having to touch a handle. Well now, in the era of COVID, suddenly that device looks pretty good. But here's where you have to really open your mind. Is that their end goal? No. Amazon and Kohler, I believe, are gonna put sensors into those toilets. And when you and I go do our business in the morning, there are biomarkers in our stool, in our urine, that tell us that we might have COVID, that we might have cancer. They are going to use that technology to begin getting into healthcare. They're gonna figure out how to make money keeping you and I healthy. This is what I mean by unorthodox ideas. If I have any advice for you, if you in your industry is already thinking about an idea, someone else is already thinking about it. If it doesn't sound a little bit crazy, you're off the mark. If it sounds a little bit crazy, you're a little closer to where the future is headed. Principle number eight, you have to listen to unconventional people. From my perspective, one of uh, the things you should all do is get a reverse mentor. By all means, continue to mentor younger people in your organization, but those of us who are a little bit older should pivot 180 degrees and get reverse mentors. Why? Because they see the world from a different perspective. I'm gonna give you a little test as to whether you benefit from a reverse mentor. This is on an entrance exam to a kindergarten. I didn't know kindergartens had entrance exams, but apparently some do. And the five-year-olds had 20 seconds to determine what parking spot number that car was in. So I'm gonna give you about 15 more seconds, just see if you can figure it out. What parking spot number is that car in? How many people are confident of their answer? Typically about 10% are, and what is it? Not 128? Yeah, it's 87. And in order to solve it, all you had to do is flip the problem upside down. Now here's the irony. 100% of the five-year-olds figured it out within less than 20 seconds. My guess is many of you are saying, well, I'm a smart guy, it's just a mathematical formula, it's two X minus three, I'll rapidly figure out the pattern. No, here's the problem. Sometimes those of us with more experience, because we have seen our industry from one perspective for so long, we think that's the only way to see it. 
What reverse mentors do is they see the world from a different perspective. So if you and your organization are not actively cultivating reverse mentors, do so. It's gonna help you future-proof your business and your association. The next principle, you have to question some unquestionable things. I don't even have time to get into the extraordinary advances of biotechnology, nanotechnology, stem cell research, regenerative medicine. But one of the things we all might need to start thinking about, radical life extension. Now I realize this gets into some murky, moral, ethical, societal issues, and a lot of you are probably even thinking, oh my gosh, I don't even wanna live that long. Well, you know what? In the future, your brain's gonna be sharper, your knees are gonna be more flexible, everything is going to change. And whether we like this future or not, as leaders, we have an obligation to think about this. <laughs> Retirement officials for, for the government, the insurance industry, healthcare industry, yeah, we need to be thinking about this and we can't put our head in the sand. What else do we need to do? We need to think about unthinkable things. And in order to do this, one of my last pieces of advice is this. Just take time to think. Regularly take time to think. And you know what, that sounds really easy, but here's where most of us spend our time thinking. What do I need to do today? What do I need to do next week, next month? That's the middle one. But you know what? Very few of us spend time thinking about the future. But where is the future value of your business and industry gonna come from? It's gonna come from thinking about the future. If that's where your future value is gonna come from, you need to spend some time thinking about the future. And there are gonna be some crazy technologies that are gonna come that are gonna transform your business. Quantum computing, blockchain, artificial intelligence. Uh, but now, let me just end on this note. The last thing you need to do is you have to imagine unimaginable things. And as a futurist, I love to study history. Who can recognize this truly historic revolutionary device? It was the printing press. Gutenberg's genius wasn't that he just invented that out of thin air. His genius was he took four existing technologies. He took a wine press, movable type ink and paper, and he converged those four into a platform that revolutionized the world. I'm here to tell you, there are innovators out there who are gonna take artificial intelligence, cloud computing, blockchain technology, 3D printing, robotic, converge these technologies into ways that are going to create unimaginable futures. So what's next? Well, as a futurist, I don't actually claim to predict the future. What I do for you and your organizations is, and I love this quote, the only way to predict the future is to create it yourself. I help your organizations create the future that they desire. This is the book that is coming out next month, Business as Unusual. I'm currently working on my next book already. It's called The Great Reset, which will be out in uh, early 2021. I have a number of books that I've written on leadership, change management, technology, so I customize all of my presentations, and I'm happy to weave in any of those themes. As an extra add-on service, if you or in your organization have podcasts, I'm always willing to be a guest on those, and then I have uh, recently upgraded my own virtual studio to make sessions, virtual sessions, that much more interactive. So thank you very much.